Welcome to this video on JavaScript objects. If you've been following along in the videos in this playlist, you've probably noticed that when we previously looked at objects when working with loops, I referred to them as object literals and sometimes just objects minus the literal. Well, I have a confession to make. There is a difference between an object literal and an object, so I'm going to set things straight now. An object literal is really what is known as a JSON object literal. But what is JSON? Well, JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. It's a string format used for defining a specific type of data structure. And although the JavaScript is in the name, JSON is actually a very common format, and it can be written and read in many different programming languages. Now, we've already looked at a few examples of JSON objects in this series, but here's another one. So when creating a JSON object, it starts and ends with curly braces. Inside of the curly braces is the data, which comes in the format of name value pairs or key value pairs. In this example of this JSON object, the key is employees and it's a string. The value is an array because it has the open and close square brackets. The separator between the key and the value is the semicolon. So this object literal has one key of employees. Its value is an array. Inside of the array, there are three elements. Each one of those elements is itself a JSON object because they all start and end with open and closed curly braces. Now each of these objects has two keys. The first key is the string first name. The second key is the string last name. And the keys in the object are separated by commas. Going back to this page on W3Schools, we see that keys must be strings. So this object literal has a key of name. It's a string. A key of age is a string. And a key of car, which is a string. The values must be valid JSON data types. So the values could be a string, which it is in this case. It can be a number, which the age is. It can be an object, an array, like we saw in the prior example, a Boolean or null, which in this case, the key car has a value of null. And as previously mentioned, each key value pair is separated by a comma. Now, as called out here, it is a common mistake to call a JSON object literal a JSON object. However, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, and as I believe I've done as we've walked through the prior example, I use the two terms interchangeably, and a lot of people do, but there is a difference. And that's because JSON is a string format. It's used to define a specific type of data structure. In this case, the data structure may be a person, and the JSON object is the string that represents the person. Now here, I've gone to jsfiddle.net, which is just an online editor for fiddling around with JavaScript. The web page has four panes, one where you can write HTML, one for some CSS, and one for some JavaScript. And when you click run, this pane will show the results. So here we see I have my H1 element being displayed with the color blue applied from the CSS. But what we're really interested in is the JavaScript where I've defined a constant named person and I set it equal to a JSON object literal. This JSON object literal, which we could reference using person, has three keys. The first is F name, its value is the string foo, last name, the string bar, and an email. We could add another key of age, its value is a number, and a key of is member with a Boolean value. So if I clear the console and run this now, we see I have console.log, the value of the person object literal in curly braces, so we know it's a JSON object literal, with its keys and values displayed. We can also access the keys of the object literal by referencing the variable name using dot notation and then providing the key that we would like the value for. So in this console.log statement, I say go to the person variable, which is this constant, dot f name and it returns the value of foo. Person.email will return the email address, and then that's written out to the console. So let's switch gears and jump over to VS Code. Here I have a simple web page. It has an H1 element. It has a div with an ID of planet info, and it has a script element, which includes a JavaScript file. 
If I load this page in the browser, we see that in the H1 element, I'm displaying Earth. And then in the div, I'm displaying some information. Now again, looking at the HTML, there is no value between the open and close H1 elements or between the open and close div tags. So clearly we're using JavaScript to display this info on the page. So let's jump in to the object.js file and take a look. So starting with the window on load function, I'm declaring a constant named planet, which we can see because of the open and closed curly braces is a JSON object literal. Then I'm calling a function named display planet and I'm passing the planet variable to it. Display planet is a function which takes one parameter, the planet, and it checks the planet variable passed in, which is a JSON object literal, to see if it has a name. And if it does, it will go to the DOM, the document object model, get the element where the ID is planet name, so that's this H1 element, and set its inner HTML equal to the planet's name. And then it does the same thing for get info. It checks to see if the planet has information. And if it does, it goes to the div that has the ID of planet info, and it sets its inner HTML equal to the planet's info. Now, as compared to the prior example, when we had person.f name, and its value was the string foo, and person.email, its value was the string foobar at test.com, this is referencing a key named get name. And if that key exists, it's referencing the planet.get name, which has an open and closed parenthesis. So we know that that open and closed parenthesis represents a function. Just like here, we have a function named display planet. It has open and closed parentheses, so it's a function. Down here, we're calling the function display planet, and in between the open and closed parentheses, we're passing the planet, which is this constant. So without even expanding the planet, we have a good idea that it must have functions because if the planet dot is pointing to a key inside of that JSON object literal, well, there must be a key get name and there must be a function get name. So let's go ahead and expand the object literal. Now, inside of the object literal planet, we see that it has two keys and we could refer to the keys as properties and properties are things that the object literal has. So a planet has a name, a planet has some info, and the keys are separated from their values by semicolons. And at the end of this value, there's a comma. So we know that we have more properties. Now, just like the planet has a property of name, so if I reference planet.name, I would get Earth. The planet also has a property named get name, and that's what it's checking up here. If the planet dot get name, so if the planet has a property named get name, then I want to execute this code. And what this code does is it says, hey, planet, call your get name function. Get name is itself a function. So just like name is the key and its value is the string earth, get name is the key, its value is a function. And what that function does is it returns this object, so this planet this object's name so when i call the planet get name it goes into the planet it finds the get name property it executes the function and it looks for this planet's name key it gets the value and it returns it and this is now equal to earth so we set the planet names inner html property to earth and that's how we see earth in the h1 element now for the info, we do the same thing. If the planet has a property named getInfo, then I want the planet to call its getInfo function. So it goes to the planet. It says, do I have a getInfo property? I do. Its value is a function. So when it's invoked, it returns this planet's info's properties value. And that's what's displayed in the page. So object literals can have properties and behaviors, and behaviors are what the planet object can do. And behaviors are implemented using functions. So with that knowledge in mind, we could jump back over to JS Fiddle and modify our example. In the HTML, I've added a div with an ID of person. In the JavaScript, in our person JSON object literal, I've added two properties, a get full name and a get email. And the value of both of these properties 
is a function. So if I reference the person's get full name property, it will execute this function, which concatenates a string by going to this person object's first name property and getting its value, and then going to this person's L name property and getting its value. It will concatenate those and return it. And likewise, if I reference the person's get email property, it'll execute the function that goes to this person's email property and returns the value. So down here where I'm setting the inner HTML property of the element with the ID of person, which is our new div, I'm building an anchor tag, setting the href equal to mail to, and then referencing the person calling the get email function and referencing the person and calling the get full name function. So if I run this now, we see we have an anchor tag that if we inspect, has an href value of mail to foobar at test.com with the text foobar in between the open and close anchor tags. Now, this is great, but what if instead of having just a single person, we wanted to have a contact list of people? In this case, I'd have to create individual constants that are JSON object literals for each person. In this HTML page, I'm including two script files planets.js, which is in a folder named data, and a scripts.js file. If we go over to the data folder and open up the planets.js, we'll see that there are three constants. All of these constants are object literals. If I open up Mercury, we'll see that it has a number of properties and behaviors. The same for Venus and the same for Earth. The structure of the object literals are the same for each constant. They all have the same properties and the same behaviors. The only difference is the data values. So in order to represent three different planets, I need to have three different object literals. Now, back in the HTML file, I have a div with an ID of container. And like I said, I'm including a scripts.js file. If we look at the window on load function in the scripts.js file, we create a variable named container, which is equal to the HTML element with the ID of container. And then we have a variable named planets, which is set to an empty array. These next three lines take each of those object literals and push them to the array. So this first line will go grab the object literal Mercury and push it into the planets array. So after this line executes, the planets array is no longer empty. It has one element in it at index zero, and its value is the constant Mercury. It does the same for Venus and Earth, and then we console.log planets. So let's take a look and see what that looks like in the JavaScript console. And here we see we have an array with three elements, and if we expand them, we see index zero through two, and they have the values for the planets. Jumping back into the code, what we want to do is loop through the planets array as long as there are elements in the array to process. And for each time through the array, we'll call the print object function, passing it the container that we want to print the data into, as well as the current planet in the planets array. So the first time through the loop, i is zero. We go to the ith index, the zeroth index in the planets array, which is Mercury, and we pass that to the print object function again with the container. In the print object function, we check the planet parameter being passed in to see if it has a print me property. And if we expand Mercury, we see it does have a print me property. And if we expand that, we see what it's doing is creating an empty string, and then it's concatenating HTML and the values of the object's properties. So here it's creating an H1 element, it has an image, it's setting the source of the image equal to this object literals image symbol and then it keeps concatenating the string until it's done and then it returns it. So here's where we're actually calling that print me function. So if the planet has a property named print me, then we'll go to that planet and ask it to call its print me function, which will return the string and then set the inner HTML plus equal to, so take what's already there and add to it inside of the container. Then it'll come back down to the loop and do the same for Venus and Earth. So if we save this, go back to the browser, now we see we have our information for Mercury on the page, the same for Venus, and the same for Earth. But it took three different object literals with the same properties to get that data onto the page. And that's where objects come into play. Whereas object literals contain the properties and values for a single piece of data, for example, the constant Mercury we just saw, the constant Mercury will always have the data for Mercury. The Mercury object literal can't be used to represent Venus or Earth. In order to represent Venus or Earth, we need an additional object literal for each. Similar to object literals, 
Objects are also variables that can contain multiple values, and they have properties and behaviors. And in the case of objects, we refer to those behaviors as methods. Properties, as we saw in the prior examples, are key value pairs. And methods are properties that have function definitions for values. To get a better understanding of objects, let's take a look at this W3Schools page where they use a car to model an object. And this is a good way to think about objects as real world objects, like a car or a house or a person. Here, we see that the car has properties, such as a name, a model, and a color. And it also has methods such as start, drive, and stop, just like a real world car. In the next video, we'll create some of our own objects and write the code to interact with them. I hope to see you there.